Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain to you the basics of a sewing machine, like the basic features, how to sew like a straight line, how to thread the machine. But of course, you have to read your manual instruction. And um, yeah, and if you buy your sewing machine from like the specialty stops, they normally give you like a first free class on how to basically use it. So you can take profit from that. Of course, you can buy the ones from Walmart. They work perfectly fine. Um, that was like, I got my first sewing machine there. So they're really cheap so there's no worries just read the manual and um, watch this video okay so I'm gonna talk about the basics of a sewing machine um, I had some few comments about like people who don't know how to use a sewing machine um, they're really cheap you can get them at Walmart for like under hundred dollars so even if you're just starting out and you want to do some sewing and start making your own things and items of clothing um, it's really not that expensive okay so here's what a basic the basic machine is okay um, let's see. Over here you have the needle, and this thing on the right is called the hand wheel. You see if I move this, the needle moves. So it's like manually to make it move, right? Okay? Um, so here like you have, like, this machine has a bit more settings, so you can do like other fancy stuff. And here, right here, I'll turn it on. Here you can adjust like the length. Right, so here, like, see, it can get longer and longer, right, so you adjust the length. Here, you adjust the width. Um, each machine will be a slightly different, so make sure you read your manual and you'll find out where your buns are. It might be at the top as well, but this one is the width, so how wide the stitches are this way, especially if you're doing zigzags, so you want big zigzag or you want a little zigzag, and this is for as long stitches, right? Okay, oh, so over here we have, mine's a drop-in bobbin. Okay, so you have, for a basic sewing machine, you have thread from the top and thread from the bottom. Okay, so this is a bobbin. There's thread on it, right? Okay, so you place it. It depends, of course, it depends on your machine. I place it down like this, and then I have this cover that closes on top, right? I really like how it's clear because then I can see when the bobbin's going to run out. So this thing right here, this is called the uh, presser foot. So it sits on your fabric. And then you can sew along to keep it down. These little teeth down here. Okay, so the teeth down here, these are called your feed dogs. And they help move the fabric or else you'll just be sewing in one spot. Right, so they'll help move the fabric along. Okay. Um, what else? And this is called the, um, what is this called? The throat plate. This metal thing here. Really not that important for you. Um... Over here, like watch this thing that moves. This thing helps guide the thread because you have to thread thing thread it through the machine, and this is what the take up lever, and um, it goes down here and it goes down here in the thread right here. To control the machine, it's this is the foot pedal. So when I push on this, the machine will start sewing. Okay, um, but my machine doesn't sew because you have to have the presser foot down. Mine's a bit more. Yeah, but normally when you push on this, this is the control. It's like a gas, like driving a car, so you use this. I'm going to show you how to thread my machine. I use these larger spools of thread because I do a lot of sewing. So normally, if you have a smaller one, you can fit it in here, but mine doesn't. So I have this stand. See, this is like a little hook, and then there's a base down there. So take the thread, place it on the hook. I come around here. So I take this right here. I take it down, up, over around this thing, it goes down here, underneath this, down here, I place the presser foot down because then you have more space to get it on the needle right here, underneath this guide, and my machine has an automatic threader so like I don't have to actually um, poke my, the thread through. So I go like this, pull it up, this is the bobbin right, place it down, around, close the lid, and now that this thread is like coming out from the side here and you want it to be over here, so what you do, you take the hand wheel, always make it go towards you, and you go in and then you gently pull this out, a loop will come. And then that way you'll have the bobbin thread coming out from this hole in the bottom right here instead of coming out from the side here. So then now we're ready to start sewing. In your machine, um, your bobbins are not wound up for you. So look, 
I have thread on this, but I'm going to just show you how to put more thread on it. So normally there's like a little groove right here. You line it up on the bobbin threader, and to, I, mine is different. Every machine is different, so you really have to check. I push this over, so we get the thread from the top. We run it through this first thing. It's like you're flossing your teeth. And then mine goes around this. This little thing right here is to put tension on the thread. If not, the um, the thread on this will be really, really loose and you want it nice and tight, right? So you just wrap it around like five or six times just so it doesn't move. And then at this point, then you push on your foot pedal and it will run like that. You need to push down on the foot pedal all the way. Like, see if I go too slow like this, the tension will not be that tight and you want it really tight. So push down all the way, like you're flooring it, right? And so then now we have thread on it. Okay, so now we're ready to start sewing. So we have the thread in the machine. Um, I'm, have a st I'm on a standard um, um, straight stitch. So look, this is right here. Straight just down the middle. Um, so this is like the factory settings. Like, Okay, so there we go. These numbers on the side is a seam allowance. The standard seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters. So this is how to help you guide it so that you don't sew like all wiggly, all not because you want to be nice and straight. So what you do, there's these lines here. And as you sew, you keep this edge. Like you normally don't watch where the needle is actually going because then you'll be too wobbly. So... What you do, you line up the edge of this fabric here to this 1.5 line. Of course, if you want like a larger seam allowance, then you can line it up with the 2 centimeters or 2.5. Or of course, if you want smaller, and also see this needle. Here, there you can see it better. Like I can move it sideways. Sorry. See? And then watch, it's going to move on to the other side. Watch and move. Right. Okay, so that's another way so that if you want to have a larger seam allowance, but normally the needle would be normally in the middle. So like that's in the middle. Okay, so we'll just try this. So when you're first starting out, just get some scrap fabric. Also, there's like, you can sew on paper, but I always thought that was like really pointless and I hated doing that in my sewing classes. It was like really a really waste of time. Anyway, so get like real fabric, doesn't matter. You can get old socks, old t-shirts to practice on until you're comfortable before starting on your project. So we're just gonna, this is a scrap fabric. So we're gonna place the press of it down. When you use the hand wheel to place the needle in the fabric, and now you want to backstitch. Backstitching, because if you start just start sewing, you know when you buy those cheap clothing from China and stuff, they, uh, it like all of a sudden it like pulls apart in your whole pants and you have like a whole, huge hole down and it's really embarrassing. Um, that's because they didn't backstitch, okay? Backstitch is like tying a knot in, a knot in the thread so it won't undo, okay? So backstitching is like pretty much as it sounds like, you're going backwards. So my machine has a button to do that. So look, I'm sewing backwards. And now we're going to sew forward, so you use your presser foot. And you keep the lining here, so you can go nice and slow. Go slower. And you keep the lining just on the edge of the 1.5, right? And you just keep going, 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 going. Say you're done, you want to be finished right here, and you have to backstitch again. Don't forget to backstitch, or else like you'll have a big rip in your clothing, and yeah, that'd be really great. Okay, so... This is what it is. See, look, now it's like fairly straight because we lined up the edge while we were sewing here. So this is what it is. So if you open it, see that's the seam. Like obviously if I pull like really hard to kill it, but like this should be very secure. I'm just like ripping it so like you can obviously see that, right? Normally you would use the same color thread so that you don't see like the little black there, but I'm just doing a different color so that you can see better. This would be called a seam. A seam is when you join two pieces of fabric together. So it would be like this. A hem is actually to finish off the edge. So say like this is my sleeve, right? And this is a cuff. You want to, this is like ugly and it's going to fray. Fray means when all the threads come out. That's what fraying is. So, so this is my cuff. So I want to fold this under, right? There's many different ways to do um, hems. But like the basic would be, normally you would iron this, but you know, I'm going to cheat here. So like fold, fold again, place it down, backstitch, 
and then we'll sew the hem. Okay, so this is what the hem is, right? See, yeah, I did really fast, so it's really ugly. But there you go. So this is a hem, and this is a seam, just like this. And normally, if you don't have a serger to finish off your seams, they recommend, it's, well, it's recommended to, sometimes I don't, depends on what you're doing and how fast you want to make it. Um, you would use a zigzag stitch, so this is a zigzag, I'll show you what it looks like. So you go next to it, and sometimes you can line up this, the black sewing line with the edge of your presser foot or with like the center. So I'm going to do it like this, place it down. See it moves side to side, that's what it's called a zigzag stitch. And what this does, this reinforces your seam so that it's stronger and like doesn't like fall apart. Which you can, and also so it doesn't fray, right? Because this is like the ugly edges and so all the threads will, will come undone. So this stops that from happening. You can also use pinking shears. Pinking shears does a similar effect. I'll show you what it looks like. This is pinking shears. See how it's like zigzag? So look, I'll cut this for you. See if I go cut. See, it's like zigzag. That's what pinking shears does. So sometimes when I'm um, cutting like, like really fragile fabric then it frays all over the place so threads are getting all of this and this comes undone see this is what the fraying is see this see this thread coming out yeah that's really annoying okay um, especially when it happens a lot and then all of a sudden your fabric's getting smaller and smaller and then it's not gonna fit you right so you wanna like make sure of that so using these kind of scissors can help so this would be the finished seam, like this. This is just to reinforce it. But normally my seams I use as my serger. But of course this is your first sewing machine, so this is a basic seam. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and you have some basic understanding of the sewing machine. Of course, if you have more questions, please feel free to ask them. And if I have a lot, I might do another second video. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye!